Hello everyone and welcome to another how-to video from Advanced Learning Inc. In this video, I'm going to address a question that I often get faced with in my online or classroom workshops, and that is how do I put a lot of data onto a slide without making the slide look crowded? Now, first of all, that is a practical impossibility. If you put a lot of data onto your slide, your slide is going to look crowded. What I'm going to address, however, is if you do need to put a lot of data onto your slide for the purpose of showing context, how do you then uh, extract or focus on certain parts of that data or zoom into certain parts of the data seamlessly in order for your audience to focus only on the important facts and so avoid information fatigue. So let's take a look at four different ways of doing this in PowerPoint. All right, so here we are in PowerPoint and here I've got my slide set up with the two content layout with we've got text on one side and we've got the table that can be edited in, in PowerPoint itself. So this is not a linked object. It is not linked to Excel or anything like that. It's a straightforward table. Now you can use this with linked objects as well, but some of the techniques that we're going to discuss will not allow you to use this with linked objects. So the first one that we're going to look at is how do you use uh, hyperlinks. So we're going to use hyperlinks and a non-linear presentation to zoom from one part of this table to another slide. And that's a straightforward thing. What you do is you can see that this slide is set up to be slide number 19 in my presentation. And a little lower down in the presentation order, I have extracted one part of this table and blown this up into a larger slide called detail tables. So this requires a certain amount of setup. So you've got to do this in advance. So here is a second slide that I've created with, uh, more, with some of that detail pulled out into a separate slide. And let's go back to slide number 19. This is the part that I've pulled out into, a, into another slide. Now all you do here is you create a hyperlink from this slide to the next one. And you do that through this process. So first you insert a shape or uh, an image. I just go with a rectangle here. And I'm going to give that rectangle a red outline and no fill. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this rectangle an animation. So I'll head over to the Animations tab and I'll simply fade this rectangle in. Okay, now when I look at this in slideshow mode, this is going to look like this. So I first have this table of data here that I can present for context. And once the audience has seen the whole data structure or the whole data table, I can then click and have my rectangle fade in. And then that obviously means that I'm now going to zoom in or that's an inset that I'm now going to take the audience to. Now, the second part of this is to create a hyperlink from this rectangle to this slide which I want to go. And you do that through the insert actions command. So you go to the insert menu and on the insert menu, I'm going to insert an action and I'm going to say hyperlink to slide 22 detail tables. So that's the one I want to hyperlink to and I'll click OK and come back here. Now I also uh, I'll also show you a little trick that I use in order to come back to where I started from and that is I go to slide number 22 and somewhere at the bottom here I'll create a, an invisible object and that is the same color as the background so I'll simply use a rectangle again something like this usually I put these on the master and in a certain location and so that it's available to me on all slides and I'll give it a sh color fill of white and I'll also give it an outline of no outline so there it is and I'll insert an action here called in insert action hyperlink to last slide view. So it'll go back to wherever I came from. So the effect of that is going to be like this. So I begin here with my presentation and then I click in to bring in the inset 
and then when I click on the inset, it'll zoom to that slide. I've set this transition earlier so that the effect is of zooming. And then if I click on the little rectangle here, which only I know is here, it'll go back to the slide from where I came. So that's the first method. You can use a straightforward linking, hyperlinking from one slide to another. We're now going to use the table in the background of the slide, and then we're going to use the background fill effect to be able to zoom into different parts of this table. Now, the effectiveness of this technique depends on the clarity and the resolution of the table that you have or the object that you have that you're going to zoom into. Obviously, you're going to zoom into, you're going to blow it up uh, to focus on different parts of it. So it all depends on how much you zoom in or how, how much you expand or uh, magnify the object that you're looking at. So let's take a look at how this is done. Done properly, it can look amazing and it can add that extra bit of professionalism to your to your presentations. So the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure that this table has a solid fill. And what I mean by that is if I put this table, place this table on top of something else, let's make sure that the table is right on the first layer. So I'm going to bring it to front and you'll see that only the bottom row has a solid fill in that it is obscuring anything that is behind it, but everything else is transparent. So I'm just gonna make sure that this table has a solid fill. And I'm gonna select the cells, the data in the table. Make sure that I select everything other than the last row because that's already filled in and I'll give it a shape fill of white. So that tells me that now my table is a solid filled object and if I place it over something else, uh, what's in the background cannot be seen. The next thing is to cut this. So I'm gonna, going to right click on this object and cut it. Now that I've cut it, I'm going to place this table in the background of my slide. And I do that by right clicking on the slide and going to format background. And this panel here on the right, if it was not already there, it would appear. And you can now select to the background of a picture or texture fill. And you can say insert picture from clipboard. So that's gonna insert the picture, the table in the background but you'll see that it has expanded it to fill the entire slide. And that's where this part, this part of the picture comes into play. So now we're gonna, we gonna offset this to zero and this to zero. And so you can see that the table is now occupying the entire slide. Now, by using these sliders or these uh, spinners, you can make the table assume its initial proportions and position it wherever you like. Now that we've done this, we can now use the background table effect to zoom into certain parts of this table. Now let's say if I want to zoom into a certain part of this table, this is all I need to do. I'll simply draw a little rectangle here. And this, is, this method works really well because you can choose how little or how big you want to zoom in into. So you can draw whatever you want. You can draw a circle, you can draw a rectangle, anything you like here. And let's keep the border of this as red. And the shape fill, you've got to set the shape fill to, be, to, to use the background fill. And you do that by right clicking on the shape and saying format shape. And in the format shape dialog box, where it's in, in the shape options, you set the shape fill to the slide background fill. So now what, what's gonna happen is when the shape when the shape moves here, you see the background moves with it. But when I place it here, it now shows me the background of this part of the slide. And if I move it here, it shows me the background of this part of the slide. So uh, I can place it wherever I like and it will pick up the background of the rest of the slide. Now, how do you use this in a presentation? 
So the first thing I would do is once I've put, once I've placed my object in the background here and I've got this shape showing me the background, what's gonna happen is this little shape is going to act like a lens that looks through any intervening objects between this shape and the background and it is going to display the background. So what that means is that if I layer this, if I layer another object over this and I place, and I make sure now this, this shape is behind that object, but if I put this shape in front of that object, so if I say bring to front, what's gonna happen is if I place this shape on this object, it's going to act as if it's a lens, like an X-ray that is looking through that object into the background. Now this allows me to do some really interesting things like this, for example, I can place an object here and I can give this object a fill of white and go to more fill colors and give it a uh, transparency. So let's say 20%, click okay. So now you can see the table behind it and I'll also take off the outline, so no outline. And now this object, I'm going to give it an animation of fade, so it fades in. Now in order to create a zoom, using the slide background fill, I'm going to insert another shape, so more shapes, and I'll draw a rectangle on the area that I want to zoom in. And I'll select a red border for this. And for the shape fill, I'm going to right click on this object and go to format shape. And in the format shape panel, I'm going to set this background to slight background fill. So that's going to have the effect of cutting to, through this uh, intervening object and focusing on the background. Now that we've got that in place, I'm now going to animate this rectangle to appear later. So I'll click on animations and I'll give it an entry animation of, of, of fade in. So that's one animation. After it has made its appearance, I'm now gonna zoom in. So now that you have a choice, you can zoom into another slide. You can create a hyperlink here and so allow it to take you to another slide. Or if you just want to zoom a little bit, you can use an animation of emphasis. And in the emphasis animations, you can set it to grow or shrink. And that's what it's gonna look like. And if I double click the animation entry, which is here, you can see that it is set to a default value of 150% and you can make that larger or smaller as you like. You can set it in a direction of horizontal, vertical or both. So you have a lot of control over how you wanna zoom this in and then you click okay. Now, one last thing is if I wanna set up many more like this and I want other little objects to appear at different places, I can also set this to exit. So I'm gonna add one more animation to this and I'm gonna set this an exit of fade out. So that means that when I'm done with it, it will simply fade and make way for the next one. So here we are. This is what the slide is gonna look like when I begin. And the next click, it's gonna mute the table. And then when I click again, that's gonna show me what it's gonna zoom into. And now that's gonna grow so that I can focus on that and then that goes away and then I can have many more such objects appearing on the slide. So there you have it. The slight background fill method allows you to display a fairly large amount of data in a small space and then zoom into various parts of that uh, using the slide background fill. It has its limitations in that you can't crowd everything in there and you can't zo zoom to an unlimited extent, uh, but used properly, it can add a lot of professionalism to your presentation. The third and fourth method that we're going to look at, both of them use PowerPoint's new insert zoom feature. This is a feature that was added to Office 365 sometime last year. And it is a great new feature which allows you to zoom into certain slides. So let's take a look at how those uh, that insert zoom feature is to be used. So here we are back in PowerPoint set up the way we were originally and we are going to use a PowerPoint's new insert zoom feature to 
to look at method three and four, which are how to zoom into parts of this table. Method three, which is using insert zoom to zoom from this slide to another detailed slide, is very similar to the first method which I showed you, which is using a shape and creating a hyperlink on that shape to zoom to uh, another part of this presentation. Uh, so when you when you want to use that method, you can click the you, the only difference between this method and the first method that I showed you, which is using hyperlinks, is that you don't have to set up the hyperlinks. You don't have to set up a hyperlink to come back to this slide. So that's the advantage of using uh, insert zoom uh, over using the hyperlink method. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. So you click on zoom, insert zoom, and you select slide zoom. And in slide zoom, you go to the slide you want to. And you click insert and it shows you a little image of the slide now if you don't want to show this image you can change this image but you cannot show what's actually on the table so you have an option you can put this here and make it as small or as big as you like you can place it in different parts of your slide you can change what this looks like so for example so if you go once you've created a zoom you get a new menu called the zoom tools and if you go to the zoom tools you have an option to change the way that that zoom looks so you can give it a border a stylish border you can give it a standard border like this uh, you can give it uh, text alt text the you can decide whether you want a transition or not and you can change the image to something else. If you want to display another image instead of this, you can do that. And this is something that I like to keep clicked, which is return to zoom. That means once the zoom is over, it will come back to this slide. Now the zoom effects are these. You have um, whether you want a shadow, glow, reflection, all that stuff. So you can do all that through this to the zoom. Now the way this works is like this. Uh, and, and of course you can add an animation for this to appear later in the presentation so you can decide to float this in later and the way that's going to work is this so i display this slide for context and then my zoom appears then i click on it it actually goes to that slide so it gives it that zooming effect as though it's going to this portion of the current slide but it is actually gone to that slide and then when you click it again it zooms out and comes back to this data. So a pretty nice effect, but in effect, it is pretty much the same as creating an object and then hyperlinking from one slide to another. And uh, that's, that's really all that it is to do, except that it simplifies things. Now let's take a look at method four. And here's where the insert zoom really comes into its own. In method four, we are going to use the insert zoom but we are actually going to zoom to portions of the current slide and we're not going to uh, we're not going to be zooming to data on a different slide so let's take a look at how that is done so here we are back in powerpoint i'm just going to delete this zoom slide that we just did and we are going to start off with the slide as it was where we were originally and to do this, to use this method, what you do is you create a blank slide somewhere in your presentation. So here I've done slide number 26 is a blank slide. There's no data on it. And in fact, I'm even going to remove the footer. So take off the footer. We have no data on this slide. And what I'm going to do here is I go back to my original slide and I'll insert a zoom. So click insert zoom, go to slide zoom. And here I will zoom to the blank slide. So I've zoomed to the blank slide and now there's a there's a very nice feature hidden in the zoom tools and if you go to the zoom tools and incidentally it's also in the context menu so if you right click you'll see the same feature there the same command it's called zoom background so what this means is it will zoom to the background of this object so if I click that it now displays the background of the object in fact you can't even see the zoom now to be able to see it i'm clicking here and i'm giving it a border so let's give it a thickish red border now this 
is a pretty nice feature. It does have some, it does have some limitations, uh, but used correctly, it can it can add a lot of it can add a, an impressive touch to your presentation. So one of its limitations are that you cannot go outside the dimensions of the original slide. So the proportions cannot be changed. So you can't do things like this, for example. So once you've inserted it, you only use the corner handles to go larger or smaller, but don't 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 change the dimensions disproportionately. So that's the first limitation that uh, this method has. The second method, the second limitation is, of course, it's actually going to zoom to the background. So the more you zoom, in fact, the smaller you make this, that means the more it's going to be expanded and so the more blurry it's going to look. So don't go too tiny because then you're going to really you're going to really blow out that background and it's going to look grainy and blurred out. So go with uh, um, experiment a little bit and you'll see uh, which uh, which resolution suits you best. So I'm going to stick with this much and I go back to the zoom tools here and I'm going to say re return to zoom. And I'm also going to apply an animation which will zoom out. Okay, so what that's going to look like is this. I first show my slide for context and then I say, okay, now we're going to zoom into this part of our slide. So I click here and it actually will zoom into that portion of the slide. You can see that the background has kind of blown out a little bit, so it's looking grainy and a bit blurred, but that's okay because we've zoomed, uh, we've zoomed it to a large extent. And then when we click, it goes back. Now that we've seen the insert zoom with zoom background, it's time to take a look at how you can add some enhancements to that method. Once you set up this zoom technique, you can copy these zooms and paste them into different parts of the table and all those all those parts become hotspots. So for example, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the uh, animation from the zoom because I like it since I have many of them, I'm going to just have them as hotspots on the table and just click on them to take me to those slides. So I'll first take off the animation and I'll copy and paste this into different parts of this slide. So I'll place that one there. And I'll stick to only the inflows here. So I'll go a little higher. And here's one of the limitations. It's inevitable that you're going to get stuff that you don't want into the zoom, like this part of this title, simply because you cannot alter the dimensions or the proportions of the zoom when you use this method. And I'm going to paste this one more time. So here we are. And this time I'm going to zoom on to all the costs of this table. So go right till here. And once we've done this, I'm going to take off the border. So we're not going to have any red border on this. So they won't be visible once we begin the slideshow. So there we are. So to all practical purposes, they're invisible to the audience. So we begin our slideshow. And once we've displayed the table for context, we can then click on this part and it's going to zoom to that part and click again and it zooms out. And then go here, click on this part, it zooms in, click again, it goes out. And now go to the outflows, click here, it displays the outflows, talk about it and zoom out. So Using the blank slide zoom background method is a really effective way of zooming into different parts of an overall whole. So you need not use this only for tables. You can use it for maps. You can use it for floor plans. You can use it for engineering diagrams. Any place that you need to magnify something that is on your slide and you need to be able to interact with it and go back to showing the whole, that's where you can use this insert zoom really, really effectively. So I hope these four techniques that I've shown you in this brief video have given you some food for thought and how you can creatively use them and work them into your own presentations. As always, 
Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in some of our other videos.